We're looking at a gamer here. His name is Munch and Play, David Roth. He's on Twitter. Um, he's a pro player, pro gamer. And that's his setup. And um, his he has wrist pain. Wrist locks up, arm stiffens, finger starts to fall asleep. Really annoying if practicing for a tournament or playing competitively to lock up. And here are some videos of it. So this is the current way that right now I do my gaming. It's just right here, overextended, or I'll, I'll lean forward, but I already have a messed up back. Um, the numbness will always start from here, and it'll shoot up my side right here, and it'll pinch right out the elbow. That's tennis elbow, by the way. What he's pointing out right here, the pain on the outside of the elbow, and it focuses on the forearm, on the outside of the forearm, that's lateral epicondylitis or tennis elbow. But usually it starts right here. He's got some tricep tendonitis too on the other side. side of my thumb. But that's, my that's it, we're going to fix all that. It's always when I'm doing shooting. I want to point out something here. His elbow is below the desk. There is a contact point, a stress contact point on his wrist here. This is uh, something that could likely be contributing to this problem. Let's keep this going. This is usually my go-to for my... Uh... <clears throat> this, I want to point out something here elbow is extended from the body the elbow is not at his side but we'll we'll talk about this in a second obviously this is this is really bad i mean he's just well let's just listen to him actually i should i should i just let the video play through before i call out everything okay and then there's one other video here just tilt the keyboard and just hand on the mouse. Okay. <clears throat> One thing to pay attention to. He has a normal size keyboard with the numpad there. This will this will make a difference like in a second. Unless I have to reach this side key right here, which is a pain in the ass. But this is this is my setup. I have this full mouse pad right here, and then this, I have plenty of desk room, it's just my arms get cramped, and Corsair, I love their mice, but for gaming, Hashtag it doesn't really work out. So, anyways. Alright, so there's a couple of things I want to point out, and this is probably the most telling video Way of this. Right now, I do so, we're just going to mute this, because we don't need that audio anymore, and when he's using this mouse, so... A couple of things. So let's talk about just basic posture really quick. Um, basic posture. The elbows should be at your side, right? They should be at your side and relaxed. Now, the 20-20-20 rule is basically you can do you can abduct by 20 degrees or so. So 20 degrees abduction, maybe about there. So like your elbow can leave your side by just a little bit. So let me do it like this. So your elbow can, you know, you, you can, you can ab, abduction is this, this is abduction. You're, you're abducting or taking something away from your body, right? So you can abduct away, you know, zero to 20 degrees, not a big deal. Uh, obviously, I just want to point this out really quick that all of these recommendations are for someone who's going to be at a desk for hours and hours. Obviously I can abduct right now, 90 degrees, and it's not going to hurt me. If the thing is, if I'm doing this for hours every day, this is going to destroy my body. Right. So that's why we're, we're trying to aim for neutral and reasonable neutral to try to reduce how out of neutral you are. You're very out of neutral in a lot of these things. But we'll talk about that in a second. So the elbows should be at the side. Right. So your elbows at your side. Ideally, slight extension is fine. Extension is basically your elbow is leaving and going in front of your body. Um, a little bit of extension is OK, but it's going to cause problems where you start to hunch over like this. And I'm already seeing a lot of that going on. Because for hours and hours, you are going into extension like this, kind of playing. Now, this is obviously, the, this is the opposite arm. You can use this camera instead, but you're kind of going to this extension. So your upper, your shoulders are protracted and your your um, upper back is hunching over. This is going to cause all kinds of problems. I, I, if you haven't gotten it already, you might be getting upper back pain too uh, from this position. If it's not, if it hasn't happened yet, it probably will happen eventually. So... <clears throat> Elbows need to be at the side. Shoulder should be dropped and relaxed. Never hunt, never shrugged. 
Never stress like this. This is going to cause all kinds of problems where you're you're basically if you have this kind of position, which is what you have going on, you have uh, arms in front of you extended and you are shoulders are protracted and you're shrugged up a little bit. All of this is going to cause tightness from the neck all the way through your traps, arms, shoulders, uh, all the way down to your wrist. Something's going to break. And it sounds like what's already broken is your tennis elbow or lateral epicondylitis all shooting through the wrist. So that's kind of where we're starting here. Um, let's go ahead and look, point out a few other postures and positions. <clears throat> so when he was, so like even like this right now, the elbow is too far in front of the body. You need to get closer to the desk. What, what's that right there? Those are armrests. Sometimes armrests get in the way. Armrests are a blessing and a curse. A lot of our furniture honestly needs to be redone from scratch, but it's never going to happen. We're, we're too ingrained in our current furniture heights. The armrests should never be in the way of the desk. That is, you should be able to get close to the desk without your armrests getting in the way and blocking you. Because if you're too far from your desk, right? If, if, I'm, if I'm back here and I use my keyboard and my mouse over here, I need to have terrible posture to get to it. So um, you need to get yourself as close as you can, but make it comfortable. Your keyboard and mouse should be kind of close-ish to the edge, and it kind of is. I think your distance from the edge of the desk is fine. Um, the problem is you're too far. You need to get closer. Now, obviously, you don't want to have the keyboard so so close to your body that you're like going like this, like a, like a Robocop or chicken wings or whatever you want to call this. You don't want to do something like that, but um, you want to get about 90 degrees. Slight extension is okay, but in your case, because you've been, uh, you've been kind of stuck like this for so long, I don't think you should go into any, ex el any elbow extension. The elbow should be trying to keep it right at your side. Uh, don't even do just a little bit. For, for the average person listening to this, you go a little bit of elbow extension in front of you. It's not a big deal. Uh, in his case, I think you should get off of that completely and really train your body to get your elbows close to your side down and relaxed so obviously this is terrible for a lot of the reasons we already mentioned <clears throat> and um you know this is this is going to be cause tightness and po problems all the way down through your uh the entire chain from the neck down to your wrist and it sounds like the part that broke is right here in the forearm now um there's one other thing i wanted to point out here it's always, we'll always start let's go back here, a little bit and we'll show you how to mess up back so having Again, the elbow here is abducted, meaning it's not, it's a little bit out from your side like this. That's probably too far. So try to get it close so your, your elbow isn't hanging out like that. Again, your elbow is a little bit extended in front of you. And um, the elbow is too low. So this is one of the other things I'm going to talk about. Your elbow is too low where it dropped below the, the table, which is cause, causing contact stress. Again, if you do this for five minutes a day, it's not, not going to make a difference. But you're doing this for hours and hours every single day. Your chair should be a little bit higher. So take a look at this side camera here. Um, pretend I'm sitting, but basically look at my elbow angle. This is slightly greater than 90 degrees, right? And I'm typing and using the keyboard and mouse. Um, 90 degrees is fine too, although in your case, it'd probably be better to have it slightly relaxed. It'd be have it slightly relaxed right there. But still, if you notice on the tape, um, compared to... The table, my elbow is a little bit above it. Again, if, if your elbow's at table height, you can go ahead and do that. Just listen to your body for pain along your elbow. And, and earlier in the video, I'm pretty sure you pointed out he has some tricep tendinitis. This can be easily caused from having tight elbows like this. You're on your phone all day and you're on a keyboard or a computer where your um, your elbows are below the desk. And so what does that cause? That causes the problem of your elbow degrees, your elbow angle is less than 90 degrees. 90 degrees is the minimum. A little bit greater is just to play it safe. So I think you should get a little bit higher. But if you get a little bit higher, what happens? Armrests might get in the way. Armrests get in the way, lower them. If you cannot lower them, remove them. This chair back here in the corner is covered right now. Let me grab it. I love this chair. You know why? It has no armrests. I'm going to get a better chair soon, but the reason why I like this chair so much is I, it doesn't have armrests and it doesn't get in the way. My elbows can drop. Now, armrests do have a function. They will help to kind of relieve some of the strain on the trap, which I think is contributing a little bit to my own trap tightness, but um, enhance, focus. It'll focus eventually. But anyway, um, Kat says, I definitely need a higher chair. Yeah. So the chairs are a tricky thing to dial them in. I've, I'm eventually going to create some nice videos to show how to dial in a chair for the right posture and height. 
Now, uh, if the armrests get in the way, remove them. Yes, there are some nice functions to the armrest where if, if your shoulder or your traps are getting kind of tight after, after you do all these changes, and if you have to remove the armrest and you notice your shoulders or traps are getting tighter than before, then okay, maybe you have to try to figure out some sort of armrest workaround because that, that, that might contribute to that. But anyway, uh, let's keep going with this uh, video again. The numbness will always start from here and it'll shoot up my side right here. In terms of your legs, I'm trying to trying to check out your legs, and it looks like your uh, hip angle is fine, which is 90 degrees or greater. Pretty much always start at like for for everybody. Uh, the rule of thumb is start at 90, 90, 90 for knees, hips, and elbows, roughly speaking, 90, 90, 90. Open up a little bit uh, if you if you like. So between 90 to 110, 120, whatever feels comfortable for a long period of time. Obviously, the ideal thing is never be stuck in a single position. For a long period of time, but that's gonna happen. Okay, let me see if there's anything else I wanted to mention. <clears throat> yeah, wrist pronation um, is another thing. So uh, his his wrist pain. So he's getting wrist pain, right? He's getting some wrist pain and elbow pain, and this is going to be caused by a couple of things. So I, I mentioned one. I, I mentioned something earlier, which was uh, if you have your arm fully extended. And you're abducted, and you're like, you know, you're you're putting your wrist in extension, like having to type too low, something like this. He was kind of doing some of that earlier. Um, uh, that's gonna cause some problems, right? Bulldogs, welcome. So another thing too is we can talk about is pronation, right? This is supination, neutral pronation. Look what my forearm is doing. Okay, right now it's in a supinated position. Or else we can use this camera. It's supinated, neutral, pronated. So what he is doing. Uh, and this is what almost all of us do is while we are gaming or using a typical mouse, I have a typical mouse too right here. We are in full pronation. Full pronation is actually pretty hard on um, <clears throat> full pronation is very hard on the wrist. Unfortunately, uh, that's the position that we're all in. We're using a mouse again, not a big deal. You do this here and there, not a big deal. But if you're doing this for hours and hours every single day and he's a pro gamer and you're using a lot of force because he's probably using a lot of force, then that's going to cause wrist pain. Uh, it's going to be likely to cause wrist pain because hours and hours, full pronation. He's using force, repetitive motions. That's repetitive strain injury. That's RSI and it's going to happen. It's just a matter of how much can you tolerate. So what can you do? Um, I would suggest at a very minimum getting some alternate mice to use when you are in um, when you're not doing something critical, right? You, you're a pro gamer, right, David? So you've got to do some uh, pretty harsh training sessions where you have to play at your best all the time. Fine. When you're not having to do that, when you're interacting with chat, when you are uh, surfing the web or whatever, get your get your hand out of full pronation, get it to neutral, just get it by your side, relax it. And you can also get a trackball mouse, one of these. This has issues too. This is not perfect, but notice my grip is going to be slightly more neutral here. It's a little bit, you notice how my, uh, my wrist is slightly turned up. This is like 10 degrees. But a little bit goes a long way for full pronation. Um, trackballs, though, they do have an issue where they're going to put some thumb strain. So I can tell for sure that my left and right thumbs are not developed equally because I use a trackball sometimes. This is a vertical mouse. This is the Gold Touch Semi Pro or Semi Vertical uh, Vertical Mouse. I like this one a lot for a couple of reasons. I also dislike it for different reasons. Um, <laughs> scarred Cosplay. And uh, Frank the Keller, Frank the Tank saying, hold it like a can of soup. Yeah, if you're holding a can of soup, then it's neutral, right? So a semi-vertical mouse, I like this one because it, it stays very neutral uh, or close to neutral. And another thing I like about it too is you can keep keep your uh, hand resting on the mouse. So that way, my hand does not need to, um, what's the word? If my hand is resting on my mouse, I can drag it more easily left and right. And I don't need to worry about my, my skin hanging off the edge and kind of dragging with it. That was one of the issues I saw with some other vertical mice. Now, um, there's some other issues. There's, there's some minor issues with this, but overall, I think it's pretty good. If you guys are interested, let me know. I do have an affiliate link with them for Gold Touch Semi Vertical Mouse. But um, in general, you need to kind of get off of full pronation all the time. Give your wrist a break when you can for non critical tasks. So one other thing I was going to mention too, and this is kind of common for a lot of pro gamers, 
is for his setup, he has, I want to see his uh, left hand on here again. I want to see him put his left hand on that keyboard. Do it, David. Do it. Put that hand. Do it. Put it on the keyboard. Do it. Do it, David. But this is usually my go-to. Do it. Do it. My uh, my standing, I'll have my arm just like straight out. Hey, Matt Taco, welcome. Glad you're liking this too. I do ergonomic evaluations as well. Um, I just want to see. Or was it the other video? Hold on. It might have been the other video. Okay, let's try this one. Just tilt the keyboard. Okay, there it, there it is. Okay, so it's, it's really hard to see here, but um, one of the things that a lot of gamers will do, especially pro gamers, is they tilt their keyboard, they rotate a little bit to the side, which is fine. That by itself is not a big deal, but what is, what's probably happening for him to, to rotate like that? Two things might be happening. <clears throat> one is uh, radial deviation. This is, look at my wrist, this is radial deviation, this is ulnar deviation. Deviating is basically just twisting your wrist side to side. Um, a little bit is fine, right? There's a natural human motion. We can do this. But if you're cocking it and holding it for a long period of time, using a lot of force, that's a problem. A lot of people, when they're mousing, they will deviate, deviate, deviate. They won't use a lot of arm movements. And you should be using more arm movements to move the mouse around. It really, ideally, David, or anyone else listening, the uh, ideal situation for doing... Um, mousing movements keyboard and mouse movements would be you don't move that you don't move your wrist very much in fact you keep the sensitivity of the mouse at the highest you can without hurting performance you keep it super high so that you don't need to move your arm or wrist that much you want to use minimal mouse movements as possible again you're a pro gamer so what what can you really do without hurting performance i don't know rsi is going to hurt performance too so you're going to have to figure out what's going to be the best for you in terms of uh the deviation here so, what else is going on? So he's, he's got the keyboard uh, tilted to the side, right? That that's not 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 that big of a deal. I can't see what the left side of his body is doing, but if the left side of his body is is doing something like this, that's terrible, right? Because he's abducting his arm, he's abducting his arm like thirty degrees to get there. I mean, we're making assumptions here. It's like forty five degrees to get there, and also then he's turning his wrist. He's radially deviating his wrist to get it into position. I can't tell if he's doing that or not. I hope he's not. It, this could be also a very natural position to just do a very slight abduction and then he's turning his arm inward, internal rotation, that's fine. So that that could be going on too. I'm gonna assume that's what he's doing. So Tilting finally, um, <clears throat> what concerns me is this is most likely a full-size keyboard. Full-size keyboard is 17, 18 inches. His mouse is very far out there. Um, did you guys know that only 95th percentile males have shoulder widths of like 18 or 19 inches? I'm the 95th percentile. I'm the top 5%. I'm 95th percentile male. My shoulder width is also like 18 inches. Basically, what I'm saying is almost everybody in the population, if you look at them with a normal keyboard, <clears throat> this is a Kinesis keyboard, by the way. I love this keyboard. <laughs> Exclamation mark. <laughs> kinesis. This is a Kinesis keyboard. It separates into two different pieces and it's uh, very short and it also tents. The fact that it tents, I think, is huge. The tenting looks like this. Um, hmm. Yeah, I can't show this easily. It looks like. It looks like. Okay, see, you see the stands? It's got leg stands on here. So that way it stays propped up like that. So it stays propped up at an angle. It's wonderful. Very, very, very wonderful. I love this thing for typing. It seriously helps a lot with wrist pain. But anyway, um, the Kinesis keyboard, let me get this out of the way because this one's a good one. It's a good ergonomic keyboard, which actually solves this problem I'm about to show you. But look at this one. This is a typical keyboard. It's a Logitech G, uh, light speed, 915, I believe, the 915. It's a wonderful keyboard. I love this thing. But look, look at this. My shoulder width, if I keep my elbows at my side, I'm the same width as this fucking keyboard. If I put my hands on WASD, okay, boom, WASD, all right? I'm neutral, elbows neutral. Right hand, gonna use the mouse. 
I'm having to abduct already by like 20 degrees, 10, 20 degrees. And we're already at the limit. And now if I'm using the mouse some more, now I'm kind of going out of that range of motion. Or now my left arm, my right arm is going to be better, right? My right arm's more neutral. Now my left arm has to abduct and rotate to get into a good position to use WASD. Neither one's good. This is kind of the problem with the standard keyboard. The numpad is awesome, but a lot of us don't need it for gaming. So what I'm looking at here, when we see this, he's got a full-size keyboard. I'm going to guess he doesn't have incredibly broad shoulders to the point where he'd still be neutral. In fact, most females will also suffer from the same problem. Most shorter guys will also suffer from the same problem uh, for a lack of super broad shoulders. I suffer from the same problem too. It's not, I need, I need to abduct a little bit to get into position. So his keyboard is so damn far from his mouse. He's created so much space here. I can't see what his shoulder, uh, shoulders and elbows are doing here. But I can almost guarantee you, one of these two arms is abducting a lot. The right arm is abducting. We saw it in another video. The left arm, I can't tell. But um, look how much space he has for his mouth. That's wonderful, right? He's a, he's a pro gamer. He you need that much space. But having that much space comes with a price. So dial like in that sensitivity. Get it as high as you side. can. Get it as high as you can without sacrificing any performance. That's That's the goal, okay? All right, David, hope that helps. If you like the content, like the content, comment, and subscribe on YouTube. Also, follow us on Twitch and leave the notifications on. Feed your brain, feed your body, and see you next time.